up, you beautiful bastards? I hope you have a fantastic Monday. Welcome back to the Philip DeFranco Show, and let's just jump into it. And the first thing I want to talk about today is an insane update to one of the worst people we talked about in 2016. And you actually may remember him. We're talking about Brock Turner. If you want the full, more in detailed story, you can go to BrockTurnerRapist.com. But just a brief recap, in January 2015, two graduate students see Brock Turner raping an unconscious woman. He tries to run away, they grab him, they turn him over to the police, and Turner is eventually charged and found guilty of three counts of sexual assault. And this story blew up for several reasons. The, the, the story itself was horrible. The victim's impact statement went viral. The judge, despite being able to sentence Brock Turner to up to 14 years, sentenced him to six months, which he only had to serve half because of good behavior, three years of probation, and Brock Turner was required to register as a sex offender. There was also the statement from Brock Turner's father that went viral. He wrote, these verdicts have broken and shattered him and our family in so many ways. His life will never be the one that he dreamed about and worked so hard to achieve. This is a steep price to pay for 20 minutes of action out of his 20 plus years of life. Which of course most people responded, hey fuck face, when the action is a rape, it should probably massively affect his life. But then for the most part, like most stories, it eventually went away. Like I said, Brock Turner served his time, or rather half his time, he returned to Ohio where he was required to register as a sex offender. But then we got the news over the weekend that Brock Turner's lawyers have filed an appeal. And they claim that their client was denied due process during the 2016 trial and called it fundamentally unfair. And here's a real thing from the appeal. His lawyers argued that the assault of this young woman did not happen behind the dumpster. The assault didn't happen behind a dumpster. The victim wasn't found behind a dumpster. She was found behind a three-sided trash enclosure and a basketball court. I'm not kidding. They argued that this phrasing implied an intent of the appellant's part to shield and sequester his activities and implied moral depravity, callousness, and culpability on the appellant's part because of the inherent connotations of filth, garbage, detritus, and criminal activity frequently associated with dumpsters. Additionally, the appeal claimed that Turner was denied a fair trial because witnesses that might have otherwise convinced them that Turner was telling the truth when he claimed that the sex was consensual were excluded by the court. The document also takes aim at Judge Aaron Persky for not instructing jurors to consider lesser criminal charges, also claiming prosecution failed to present constitutionally sufficient evidence to support the three counts of conviction. When speaking to the media, Brock Turner's legal advisor said, what we are saying is that what happened is not a crime. It happened, but it was not anywhere close to a crime. But to all of that, I, I want to remind you, we're talking about a situation where not only the woman said she was raped, but where you have two eyewitnesses that said they came across the scene. At first they were like, oh, maybe that's consensual. Then realizing the girl was unconscious, two witnesses that said Brock Turner ran away from the scene of the crime. And they 100% know it was him because those witnesses then chased him down and were able to hold him until police got there. It also seems insane to me that they would go after the judge who gave by far one of the most lenient sentences we have ever seen in a case like this. Also, Brock Turner can say all he wants that this was consensual. But let's say there were no eyewitnesses. We, we didn't even have the victim's testimony. An unconscious person cannot consent. It's just that simple and that's before even putting everything else into the story together. That said, as of right now, we do not know what's gonna happen with this appeal, but as soon as we get any updates to it, you will be damn sure I will be covering it. Then let's talk about House of Cards. House of Cards, of course, the massively successful Netflix series starring Robin Wright, Kevin Spacey. The production was shut down after all of those accusations came out against Kevin Spacey. Since then, more accusations against Spacey have been piling up, but along with that, many people were wondering what is going to happen to House of Cards. We got the news today that the production for the final season of House of Cards will start back up early 2018, and it will be returning without Kevin Spacey. Instead, the main focal point will be Robin Wright, which I will say as a fan of the show does seem to make sense. She has become more and more important to the series. I don't want to give out any spoilers there, but if you've watched the show, you know that. And I'm interested to see how they get rid of Kevin Spacey's character, which it's, it's not an insane thing to do. In fact, in the book that inspires the Netflix series, Frank Underwood's character dies. But we'll see what happens next. But from that, I want to share some stuff I love today. And today in awesome brought to you by squarespace.com slash Phil. Squarespace, of course, a fantastic, intuitive, easy to use place to make a beautiful, professional looking website. There's nothing you have to install, patch, or upgrade ever. So if you want to make a smart move like many from the nation already have, start your free trial, go to squarespace.com slash Phil. And if you really like it, use offer code Phil for 10% off your first purchase. And the first bit of awesome, I like to sometimes do a recommendation for a movie or a series. And today that is the marvelous Mrs. Maisel. If you have an Amazon Prime membership, I highly recommend you watch season one right now. It is phenomenal. I binge watched it yesterday. It may be one of my favorite series ever just from this first season. It's eight episodes around 50 minutes of pop. Do yourself a favor. Then we had Jordan Peele working with Vanity Fair doing a video around fan theories around his movie Get Out. Then we got a small little teaser for the new Jurassic Park Fallen Kingdom. Then just in time for Christmas season, we got Lindsay Sterling and Carol of the Bells. We also got a brand new teaser for another episode of Black Mirror and just released the season, Netflix. What do we have to do, Netflix? We will do it, just release it. You're killing us, I get that that's the point. Come on, please. Then in Space Awesome, we got a video from Seeker on how close we are to photographing a black hole. I put my seemingly random and irrational fear of black holes to the 
the side, and it was an awesome video. And if you want to see the full versions of everything I just shared, the secret link of the day, anything at all, links as always are in the description down below. Then let's talk about the time person or people of the year for 2017. Since 1927, time has always announced a person of the year, and that's to recognize the person or group that has most influenced the news cycle that year. So it's not necessarily a hey, you're awesome award, it's a hey, you're one of the biggest names in news right now. And you may have already seen this year that there was already a controversy around it. On the 24th of last month, Trump tweeted, Time Magazine called to say that I was probably going to be named Man Person of the Year like last year, but I would have to agree to an interview and a major photo shoot. I said probably is no good and took a pass. Thanks anyway. To which Time Magazine responded, The president is incorrect how we choose Person of the Year. Time does not comment on our choice until publication, which is December 6th. And now, as of today, Time Magazine has released their short list, their top 10 for who could be the Person of the Year. And the finalists on that list are Jeff Bezos, Amazon CEO, now richest man in the world, The Dreamers, the thousands of undocumented immigrants brought to the United States by their parents when they were children, they're in uncertain times because Trump's position on DACA, Patty Jenkins, she was the director of Wonder Woman, which also made her the first woman to direct a film that made over $100 million in its opening weekend, Kim Jong-un, the North Korean leader, fuckboy extraordinaire, the reason why we are worried about a nuclear war again, Colin Kaepernick, who for many was the match that lit the fire that led to all those sports protests, the entirety of the Me Too movement, feels like every day we have a new story of sexual harassment and sexual assault being shared. Robert Mueller, he of course was appointed as special counsel after Comey's firing, investigating the potential involvement of the Trump campaign with Russians. So far, charges have been brought against four people. Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, he's been pushing through massive changes in Saudi Arabia, many people seeing him as the future of Saudi Arabia. Then Donald Trump, maybe you've heard of him, maybe you've seen him in the news cycle now and then. President of the United States, some people would say opinionated. And finally, Xi Jinping, he's the president of China, has gained a lot more power this year and is seen as one of the most powerful leaders in China in decades. So for better or for worse, those are your top 10. We will know who the time person of the year is Wednesday. Pass the question off to you. Who do you think should be the time person of the year? And remember, it doesn't matter if you like them or not. This is about world conversation, being in the news. I'd love to know your answer to this and, and your thoughts on why that person or those people. Then let's talk about this disturbing story that blew up over the weekend. It starts with this video that was originally posted on Snapchat. It shows a teenage boy holding a cat and then hurling it into the street. I'm not going to show the video here. I'll, I'll link out to other versions that have since been posted. It's truly disturbing. And this guy just chucks this cat into the street. It hits the pavement. You can hear it whimpering before the video cuts out. Well, someone saw that. They then posted it to Twitter and it blew up. Multiple versions of this video getting thousands and thousands of retweets. Many people saying we need to find out who this is. The internet did its thing and quickly did that. I'll be sharing his name in this video, which uh, I'll get to the reason for that in a second. But upset people on the internet. They found out his name, what school he went to, the local police department number. Anything you imagine they could find on him, they found it. Then on Saturday, we saw the Fontana Police Department tweeting that they had been contacted by several people regarding the video, tweeting, we are aware of a video that depicts the abuse of a cat. We thank everyone for contacting our department with the video. It has been determined that the incident took place outside our city and we are working with the appropriate jurisdiction to find the cat and the suspect. Then soon after, the Ontario Police Department issued a press release saying they received information on Saturday regarding the abuse of a kitten by a young man. Police saying they identified a 16 year old suspect but would not be disclosing his name due to his age. Authorities adding on Saturday night that the suspect has not yet been located and arrested. And on that note, I ask to, to the people of Ontario, if you, if you live around Ontario, if you see this disgusting human being, please contact the authorities. Now regarding the cat, there are many reports circulating online saying the cat had died from internal bleeding, broken skull, broken ribs, but the police department revealed that the, the cat was actually okay. It had a fractured leg, but it was going to survive. Due to a regular blood test, we also know the cat suffered internal injuries. But once again, police are going door to door trying to find this suspect. They, they still do not have him. But for now, that's where this story ends. Once again, if you know who this is, please report him. There's so many disgusting and horrible people in the world that, that when you get the chance to hold someone accountable, you just have to, to make the world just that much less shitty. Then very briefly, I want to talk about tax reform. You might have seen over the weekend in the Senate a vote of 51-49 for tax reform, but a reminder from the last time we talked about this, it is not all done. Right now, the US Senate and House have passed different bills. There are different things in each one, and we're talking basics and specific. Example, the Senate bill has seven tax brackets, whereas the House only has four. As of right now, Congress is set to adjourn on December 15th. But House Speaker Paul Ryan said that he would actually keep the House in session to make sure that this passes. Now, with that said, if the House and the Senate, that they go to conference, they come up with a singular bill, and then they pass that bill. As of right now, it looks like a lot of the provisions in this tax reform would be pushed through January 1st, but you won't personally feel the changes until next year. This will not affect your 2017 tax returns. And so one slash, if there is a singular version, we'll, we'll go into the specifics of that. But also, if you'd like to look further into some of the things that they are proposing with this tax reform, I'll, I'll link to a video where I covered it last time, as well as other sources on more updated information. Then let's talk about Michael Flynn, Brian Ross, and ABC. So if you didn't see last Friday, Michael Flynn pled guilty. This to charges of lying to the FBI about the nature of his conversation 
conversations with then-Russian Ambassador to the United States, Sergei Kislyak, during the presidential transition. Those conversations led Russian officials to temper their response to increase U.S. sanctions. And those charges carry a maximum of five years, though he's most likely going to face six months at most due to his cooperation. Now, as you might imagine, when this news started coming out, the media was all over it. But one report really stood out, and that was the one from ABC via Brian Ross. Brian Ross reported on Flynn in the situation, saying, He's prepared to testify, we are told by a confidant, against President Trump, against members of the Trump family, and others in the White House. He is prepared to testify that President Trump, as a candidate, Donald Trump, ordered him, directed him to make contact with the Russians, which contradicts all that Donald Trump has said at this point. It was huge news, collusion, definitive evidence. But then later after that report, ABC had to issue a correction. The key focal point of that report was that candidate Trump ordered this. They then have to issue a correction saying, oh, actually it was President-elect Trump, saying their source later clarified that during the campaign, Trump assigned Flynn and a small circle of other senior advisors to find ways to repair relations with Russia and other hotspots. And shortly after the election, President-elect Trump directed Flynn to contact Russian officials on topics that included working jointly against ISIS. That is immensely different. Now, in addition to that tweet, Brian Ross on ABC later that night issued that clarification. But for many people, that was nowhere near enough because the news had already spread. And the reason for that is one would assume on such a serious topic, on such a pivotal topic, that if a source like ABC is reporting on something, they've done their work, they've made sure it's factually accurate. And so many people take it as unfettered truth and then people just start spreading it like crazy. One of the best and kind of now hilarious examples of that was The View. As Brian Ross is reporting, Michael Flynn promised full cooperation to the Mueller team and is prepared to testify that as a candidate, Donald Trump directed him to make contact with the Russians. Yes! <laughs> to look a lot like Christmas oh and it's God. beginning to look a lot like collusion. This, yeah. yeah. It's mean, like it's... you get a car, you get a car, you get a car. <laughs> reaction from the audience, by the no, way. No. I mean, he goes to jail, he goes to I jail, mean, he goes to jail. <laughs> So then Brian Ross reports that the view reports that it spreads to more outlets, more people. And that's also part of the problem because when you, when you have to issue a correction, which 100% we, we should always have to issue corrections, it's very rare for the correction to get in front of as many people as the false information did. Now seemingly to try and make good, ABC announced on Saturday that they were suspending Brian Ross for four weeks. In their statement saying, we deeply regret and apologize for the serious error we made yesterday. The reporting conveyed by Brian Ross during the special report had not been fully vetted through our editorial standards process. As a result of our continued reporting over the next several hours, Hours, ultimately we determined the information was wrong and we corrected the mistake on air and online. It is vital we get the story right and retain the trust we have built with our audience. These are our core principles. We fell far short of that yesterday. Effective immediately, Brian Ross will be suspended for four weeks without pay. And Brian Ross tweeted a response later saying, my job is to hold people accountable and that's why I agree with being held accountable myself. President Trump also responded to all of this, tweeting congratulations to ABC News for suspending Brian Ross for his horrendously inaccurate and dishonest report on the Russia, Russia, Russia witch hunt. More networks and papers should do the same with their fake news. So he attacked news in general, but also kind of commended ABC until Sunday when he tweeted, people who lost money when the stock market went down 350 points based on the false and dishonest reporting of Brian Ross of ABC News, he has been suspended, should consider hiring a lawyer and suing ABC for the damages this bad report has caused. Many millions of dollars. Although I will say on that note, that's a little pot calling the kettle black in my opinion. President Trump has several times in the past said things that were either untrue or just straight out attacked companies. And we've seen how that temporarily affects the market. But that's where we are right now, incredibly damaging and embarrassing for ABC and Brian Ross. And the thing to hit on is that this is damaging to more than ABC and Brian Ross. Well, when anyone in the mainstream messes up, it affects the entirety of the mainstream. Well, not always. I know a good number of people that don't see Fox News as mainstream media. That, that's just a different hue of bullshit. And that's not me trying to shit on any single place. I, I think one of the most important things for people to realize is that every place, even what, what, whether it's intended or not, that there, there is bias. The quality of reporting is often uh, how much someone can separate themselves from their own bias. One of the best things is once you realize that people people are coming from different aspects, it gives you stuff to compare and contrast. And the net result of that shouldn't just be that you get to cherry pick and choose what you want to believe. It, it's just so that you can you can help break down what's actually happening. Yeah, that's where I'll leave that one. And that's actually where I'm going to end today's show. And remember, if you liked this video, you like what I try and do on this channel, you want to support independent media, go to defrancoelite.com, sign up. On top of helping fund the show, you get early videos, exclusive live streams, there's posters, there's mugs. Also remember, if you missed the last Philip DeFranco show, you want to catch up, click or tap right there to watch that. Or if you want to see today's brand new 
behind the scenes vlog, click or tap right there to watch that. But that said, of course, as always, my name's Philip DeFranco. You've just been filled in. I love your faces and I'll see you tomorrow.